Welcome to OMG, I just about got robbed in Medellin. I had an unfortunate experience in Medellin which I wanted to share with all our viewers. Uh, while we were in Medellin, I had my first ever street robbery attempt made on me that I've ever experienced in my entire life, which is pretty amazing considering how old I am and the fact that I've lived in cities, my, lived and traveled in cities my entire life. So um, it's pretty amazing that at my age, this is the first time I've experienced anything like this. What I can say very clearly and without a doubt is that the timing of this event uh, was, I guess, in my favor, for lack of a better way of saying it, because that very same day, in the morning of this event happened in the evening that same morning uh, i had been on a walking city tour of medellin in which our tour guide had begun the tour before he even started the tour he addressed us uh giving us advice about our personal safety and possessions such as our phone and wallet in in being in the city of medellin and I can say without a doubt, if I hadn't been fortunate enough to get that advice that morning about the potential risks uh, posed to us as tourists in, in Medellin, that the, attempt, ro the attempted robbery on me would have turned out with a much different outcome than it did. So now that I've got you all in suspense, what happened to you, Len? Tell me about it. I'll go into that and then I'll go backwards in time later in the video to tell you about the valuable advice that we got from the tour guide at the beginning of the day. This uh, robbery attempt happened to me on a Monday evening about 6.30 p.m. in the Par Parque Barrio part of Medellin um, at a bus stop at the, and with the perfect uh, movie setting backdrop of a dark uh, thunder, thunder storm and lightning storm with a heavy downpour. And at the time that it happened to me, I was taking shelter in a bus stop along with a number of other people taking shelter from the rain. Uh, which brings me back to uh, a piece of advice that our tour guide gave us earlier in the day, um, which was no dar papaya, which is Spanish for don't give papaya, which simply put means uh, don't put yourself in a position um, or in a location or circumstances that would make you more vulnerable to being taken advantage of by somebody with malicious intent. So for example, in a crowded public space, don't whip out your phone to take a selfie, giving the opportunity for a local or a stranger to grab the phone out of your hand and run and disappear into the crowd. Or uh, always being aware of your surroundings, who's around you, um, what's going on, the noises and sounds, just being aware of, of, of uh, what's going on around you and not to give the opportunity for something unfortunate to happen to you, like losing your phone when you're taking a selfie. So having gotten all this good advice earlier in the day about not giving papaya and all the other safety advice that our tour guide had given us, I was kind of on guard uh, during the day, kind of watching for these potential situations as we were walking around the city and following the end of the tour. I was also obviously um, watching and not trying to give papaya and put myself in a dangerous or potentially risky situation. But at the time that the incident happened, I was inadvertently, I guess, giving papaya uh, by being less alert 
to my situation than I should have been. It was late in the day. I was tired from being out all day on the tour. It, uh, my, uh, I was wet and cold. So what happened is I was in the bus stop taking shelter from the rain and I had my phone in my left hand with the screen up and I was also holding the charger along with it so it wasn't the best way to be holding my phone but I had to have the charger on because my phone was dying the battery was dying so I wanted to recalibrate my GPS on Uber for my pickup spot so I planned to leave the bus stop and go walk a few meters away to wake up my GPS for the position that the Uber was going to pick me up in. And uh, what happened is I, I, as I exited the, the crowded bus stop, which had solid walls, it wasn't glass walls so you couldn't see, as I was exiting I bumped into, came face to face with a man who was, I believe, planning to come into the bus stop to get shelter from the rain. And so what I assumed was happening was that I had, I was leaving, somebody was coming in, I came face to face with him. I think I even apologized for bumping into him. <coughs> Excuse me. So I stepped right to go around him thinking, you know, accident, and I'm going to step around him. Like when you meet somebody on the street and you do this dance where you, he goes right, you go left, and you go around each other. So I step right, thinking I'll go around him. He matched my step and stood in front of me, and I thought, oh, he made the wrong decision. We both went the same way. So I stepped the other way, stepped left, thinking, okay, I'll step out of his way this way. He stepped left as well keeping eye contact with me, and I might add, kind of intimidating eye contact. I didn't say anything, but just was silent. Um, I stepped left, he stepped left to block me, and that's when I realized, no, this isn't a bumping into a stranger, this, he's intentionally not letting me by, and that's when he made his move, which was to kick at my uh, left leg, to throw me off balance so that I'm focused on my uh, balance versus protecting my pockets. Unfortunately, that's the piece of advice that our tour guide had given us earlier in the day that pickpockets will try to throw you off balance by going for your leg and either kicking it or trying to lift it up um, to get you focused on balancing and your attention away from your pockets so they can slip into your pocket. But as I had gotten the warning from our tour guide, that was in the back of my mind, as, as he kicked my left leg, I reached down to cover my pockets, which kind of deterred him from going for my pockets. And then after that, I, I, I guess I realized I was in a situation. So I started the dance of trying to go around him, stepping around him and that was not working so what I ended up doing uh, was verbally telling him to back off and I used my my right arm uh, and my fist I guess in in this kind of position against his chest and I pushed him backwards to get him out of my get him out of my space because we were like literally nose to nose during this and I pushed him backwards quite firmly or I, maybe aggressively, I don't know. I, I guess I made the split second decision to, to, uh, to do that. Um, and then he was a little bit distance away from me. I was telling him, back off, back off. I was, I wasn't, I was upset, but I wasn't, I wasn't, I, I was escalating, I guess. I, I knew this. I, I thought that I would just be able to easily get around him and we did this dance back and forth of me stepping one way to get out of his way and and him making the same step and it became very obvious that I wasn't going to get by him or he wasn't going to let me by him so my my voice escalated my words escalated into 
um, uh, you know, less than polite language. Um, and then he went to grab uh, the phone out of my left hand that I was holding kind of at my hip. And fortunately, I, ha I, I kind of was anticipating that as well. So I had a very, very firm grip on my phone. He grabbed my phone and I had a firmer grip and I, I pulled away and he didn't manage to get it. And at the same time, I'm, I'm pushing him away. Um, and somehow I managed to, through the pushing, shouting at him, telling him to back off and including telling him where to go um, in basically told him to fuck off and I was shouting by this point um, uh, so I managed the dance of going back and forth and trying to get we got turned around and he was I was pushing him back towards the uh, the bus stop and I was facing the bus stop and I was getting more and more forceful because he was not he was not giving up and I, I just continued shouting back off fuck off get out of here and I can't remember what I said but it wasn't wasn't very polite um, and he eventually he gave up turned turned around and and uh, left and crossed the street and it seemed like that was a long time but it was probably only 20 to 25 seconds in total between coming nose to nose with him and and him leaving it felt like forever um quite honestly i was very very shaken up by this um i was glad that he decided to give up um but i was quite shaken up by it because i was left wondering oh my god did i do the right thing like what if my reaction had prompted him to escalate his reaction what if he had had a knife a gun a weapon or he he decided to become aggressive but i i i made the best decision that i could in that circumstance i kind of within a few seconds i had sized sized him up and the his his body language he was uh, he was being aggressive, but not overly aggressive. Um, my keeping him at bay like this uh, was working. And he was persisting, but not in a way that... I, I felt threatened, but I felt relatively safe when I, when I was doing the dance with him, because I, I had him at least in striking distance away. And there were other people around that I think were keeping an eye on from the bus stop. So um, I reacted it, reacted to it instinctively and best as I could. I sized him up. He was smaller in, in size than me. And just everything all combined with, with, um, with the advice that we had gotten from the tour guide, I made that split second decision that I needed to use force to keep myself safe. And I'm not saying that this is I'm sharing this experience as my experience of a particular situation in particular circumstances um, not as a prescription or to suggest that this is exactly how you should respond to this type of situation because honestly if the circumstances were different I probably would have reacted differently like if he had six or eight inches on me and a hundred pounds I probably wouldn't have been as likely to um, push back and be aggressive. Um, but, uh, and, and if you were in different circumstances, and from what I understand, um, having traveled and gotten advice about safety in general, the authorities generally recommend if you're facing a situation of robbery or violence and there's a weapon involved or a lot of aggression and violence the police recommend that you don't resist because that's likely to escalate the situation with the attacker and result in you being harmed as well as losing your your possessions you can replace your wallet but you can't replace 
your life or your injuries that you might sustain. So I was thinking about all this in a matter of seconds and I made what I believe to be the best decision for my well-being and safety and protection of my personal possessions. Obviously, I don't want to lose my phone and my wallet. Um, um, so, I, I guess I'm saying, in a roundabout way, I'm saying this was my experience. Take it for what it is as my experience, as learning a, about um, how I reacted. And I, I hope that if you experience something like this, having seen this video, that this, this will be helpful to you and anybody else that watches this video. And at the very least, it, hopefully you never experience a situation like this, but at the very least, it's a piece of information that you can have about traveling in uh, Colombia and in, I guess, big cities in general, because this type of thing could happen in any big city in North America, or South America, Europe, Asia. It's all kind of the same um, thing, pickpocketing and street robbery and that, that can happen, that could happen to me in my, in my hometown, my home city. So that's, I, but I just want to share this experience with you um, because it was one of the, one of the experiences we had in, in Medellin. I guess what I'm saying is um, be as educated as you can uh, about where you're going to visit and the risks and dangers that may be there. Um, and um, how you can potentially deal with them and so on and go um, to, to use, um, I think it's a Boy Scouts motto, don't be scared, be prepared. Um, know as much as you can before you go visit a place about your personal safety and be educated so that if something does happen to you, you're somewhat prepared to react to it in a way that's, that doesn't catch you off guard and, and hopefully you have a safe outcome and always do listen to your gut um, and listen to listen to yourself what 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 your your guts telling you you need to do to to maintain your personal safety I made the decisions based on what I in a in a few split seconds felt was best to keep myself safe fortunately for me it worked out um, and I'm very, I, I can say, I, I'm very thankful that that same day I'd gotten the, the advice from the tour guide about the risks and how things might happen if they were to happen. Because I can say without a doubt, if I hadn't got that advice that morning, I almost positive I would have lost my phone and I would have lost my wallet and I, I wouldn't have been able to react defensively um, and prevent the loss of my phone and wallet which had that happened that would have been the most down incident of our travels so on that topic I'd like to share with you a few of the a bit of the advice that our tour guide gave us at the beginning of the tour about safety in, in Medellin and I guess even before I share the safety um, tips that we got from the guide, I, I guess I want to reiterate, you can probably tell just from watching me that even me talking about what happened is, makes me anxious and upset thinking about what happened because I'm, I'm falling over myself. I'm, I'm not talking very clearly. So it, it was a, a shake up for me for this to happen and, and even talking about it, I, I, um, I'm not very clear in explaining. So I apologize for my, my broken way of describing uh, what happened to me because I still am upset about it. So 
I apologize for the broken nature of, of how I explain this all. I hope it all makes sense. So getting back to what our tour guide gave us as safety advice, we'll go into that now. So I'll explain what our guide explained to us about the pickpocketing scheme, which he said was specific to Medellin. He said pickpockets will work in teams and what will often happen is in a busy, crowded place, the one team member will come in front of you and drop something in front of you like a lighter or a pen or a phone or something. And um, this is to distract you and then they they start talking to you and reaching over to pick it up, um, telling you, don't step on my thing. And then they'll try to lift your leg to get you off balance so that you're focused on your balance and your focus is lost on your pockets. And the partner in crime from behind comes and picks your pockets while you're trying to keep your balance and you're focused on not falling and this guy shouting or um, holding your leg or whatever it is that he's doing. That's kind of what happened with um, my incident in the bus stop. Um, he wasn't working as a, as a team. He w it was a crime of opportunity. I stepped out of the bus stop and he was stepping into it and we came face to face and he started with blocking my way as we did the dance back and forth. Uh, and then he went for his move to kick out my left leg to get me off balance. And as soon as he did that, I was down to cover my pockets, which seemed to deter him. He did go for my pocket, but I had my hand down. And, and uh, so that advice definitely paid off because uh, I would have I would have been trying to keep my balance and he would have successfully got into my pocket and got my wallet. And I made reference to it before, but the other important thing was don't give papaya dar, no dar papaya. Don't give criminals the opportunity to, to harm you or take something from you that makes it easier for them to take something or harm you. Don't be in certain locations at certain times of the day. Don't walk alone. Um, don't have a thick wallet full of cash that you flash. Um, keep your wallet in a deep front pocket. Don't have your camera out in a busy place. Um, just all those things about um, don't make it any easier than it already is for someone to have malicious intent and carry through on that malicious intent. Uh, and also be aware of your appearance. Um, don't dress, don't dress rich, don't dress flashy when you're out. Don't wear expensive watches and jewelry. Leave those at home or in your accommodation. Um, try to blend in and dress just dress down to blend in you don't want to be make yourself a target as oh there's a person that's got something worth stealing um, always be aware of your surroundings be scanning your surroundings all the time and be aware of what's around you 360 of the people and the circumstances the noises um, just be aware don't let your guard down um, do not accept drinks, cigarettes, food from strangers um, because it can be spiked or poisoned. Um, do, don't accept somebody's offer to come to their home to meet family or to have drinks or go have a card game um, in bars and restaurants. Do not leave your drink alone. And the big thing, um, don't come to Medellin seeking love, sex, drugs, or relationships. There's far too many examples of, of foreigners coming to find a girlfriend or engage in the, the sex trade that end up 
harmed and or dead. You, you just don't, Medellin doesn't want you coming to Medellin for the vice trades um, because you're almost guaranteed to have a bad experience. Um, obviously, don't take a stranger back to your accommodation. If you met somebody in a bar or a restaurant, um, there's multiple examples of foreigners doing that and being drugged and being robbed and or killed. Um, only use official taxis and use rideshare apps. Uh, don't hail a street taxi because there's a lot of unofficial taxis that will either rob you with the fare, charging you too much, or take you to a place you don't want to be and rob or take advantage of you. Listen to the locals is another piece of advice. Tour guide said a lot of locals will tell you, they'll approach you and tell you you shouldn't be in this neighborhood, this isn't a safe neighborhood, put your phone away. Um, so when you get that advice, heed it and leave the neighborhood, get yourself to a safe place. Um, and the very last thing, if you are in an emergency and you have a phone, dial 123 for assistance. Um, Columbia doesn't have a 911. Their 911 is dialing 123. So um, I'm hoping that this has been uh, uh, informative and helpful for you to hear about my particular experience in Medellin. And I hope for you that you never experience a situation like I did. Um, and that uh, I, I, I hope this was helpful for you. I, I, as you can see, I'm still upset about this experience. Um, but I, I, it was an experience that wasn't positive, but I, I wanted to share it with our viewers because it was part of part of our experience and and time in Medellin. So thanks for joining me for this video. And um, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, leave some comments. Um, we always love to hear from you. And don't forget to hit the, uh, the bell button uh, to notify you when one of our new videos is coming out. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you on the next video.